Thank you for having me and I'm sorry I couldn't join you in real life, but I'd be very happy to talk about uh, the sustainability agenda of PostNord. Our business strategy includes a very distinct sustainability agenda and for us it means three things. First of all, we want to be a voice for fair conditions in the industry, but also a workplace where our employees can feel safe. Uh, and of course, we're striving towards a zero vision for fatalities and, and serious injuries as part of that. But also having an inclusive workplace characterized by trust and respect is very important. And of course, to make sure that we bring in diversity and inclusion. And we're also striving towards a gender balance of, of 4060. And finally, we would like to lead the industry into the low carbon economy. And we have taken a very scientific approach and a very ambitious approach over the past years uh, to reduce our climate impact. And we also have been making sure that our targets are aligned with the Paris Agreement, including scope one, two, and three. And in 2020, we reached our target of reducing our carbon emissions by 40% compared to 2009. And this success have encouraged us to step up our efforts even further. So now we're aiming for a fossil free business operation by 2030. And this is what I will talk more about during my presentation. As I said, we have since long been very dedicated to reducing climate impact and our investments go into building a greener infrastructure. Our fleet, our terminals, but of course also making use of new technology when that is available. And that is all key in achieving these ambitious targets. And the Nordics are also very privileged of having access to clean electricity, but also sustainably produced biofuels. And all that is part of our agenda. So how did we make the 40% happen? Well, the transition to emission-free vehicles is happening at scale, but also transition is also now initiated for, for heavy trucks. So far, some 4,000 vehicles are electrically charged in our fleet, and that represents approximately a third. And then for the heavy transports, we're trying to use as much biofuels that we can get hold of. And that includes uh, biogas, uh, biodiesel, ethanol, and, and RME. And we are using approximately 40 million liters of biofuels on a yearly basis. Uh, and the share of biofuels is constantly rising. And by the end of the second quarter this year, we were up to 31%. But we've also been pulling levers like modality shift and hypermiling. Uh, and that means that we have trained our chauffeurs in energy efficient driving. But also just you know, work on practical things like uh, wheel setting, anticipating traffic, but also looking at tire pressure and things like that. And of course, all the electricity we buy for our operations is green electricity from renewable sources. But we still have some 300,000 ton of carbon dioxide emissions left in our operations. Uh, and this is where we now have worked heavily over the past six months, I would say, to put in place an agenda for getting rid of also that. And we call that our green technology roadmap. And in brief, what it means, it means that we're going to be fossil fuel free by 2030. By 2025, uh, we're going to reduce our carbon emissions by another 40%. So what we have done in 10 years, we're now going to do in five years. And finally, we want to go for a zero emission last mile, no later than 2027. So that's the agenda we're embarking upon. We don't know exactly how to get there, uh, but we are definitely determined to find a way uh, to reach our targets. And despite all these efforts, uh, we are going to have to do more. And that means we need to team up. We need to team up with all players in the value chain. And this is just one example uh, that I'd be very happy to share with you. So we have been joining forces with well-known companies like Scania, H&M, Ericsson, Siemens and E.ON in what we call the Pathway Coalition. And that is a coalition of very influential industry players that work together to achieve fossil free commercial heavy vehicles uh, or transports by no later than 2050. So innovation and cooperation uh, is key, not only finding future technologies, but also uh, by reducing the energy needed in our operations, because I would say the most sustainable energy is the one that we don't use.
So I would like to point to one specific area where there is still a lot of untapped potential to reduce climate impact, but also to reduce cost. And we see the potential in the global logistic chain. We see it in our own operations, we see it inside our vehicles, and we see it inside the parcels that we transport. And we have estimated that roughly some 30% of what we transport is air. So basically, one third of our carbon emissions in our parcel transports is coming due to transporting air. And we all know that air can travel by itself. And by turning the spotlight to reducing air in e-commerce parcels, we wanted to address a very complex issue by asking ourselves a very simple question. What it, would it take for us in the e-commerce chain? Operators, companies, consumer, packaging technology companies and so forth to substantially reduce the air in e-commerce parcels. So by launching the initiative, the packaging journey, our approach has been to orchestrate a discussion among the entire logistics chain to try to find an answer to this very simple question. And our initiative got an instant and also very positive response uh, from the industry. And some of the challenges holding back uh, the industry development towards less air in e-commerce parcels were expressed in initial meetings and, and workshops. And you can see some of them listed here on the slide. It's things like investment in packaging technology not being feasible. Uh, the cost of storing multiple size parcel boxes is too expensive. It brings on some practical challenges like putting on the label on a small parcel is difficult. But it was also this whole notion of being afraid of jeopardizing the whole consumer experience when opening up the parcel. But we were lucky to have academia with us from an early stage. And uh, a two-year research funding program was granted to Sharmas University of Technology in, in Gothenburg to get the heart of this problem and, and to get the heart of finding a solution. And together with PostNord and the global well-known packaging B DS Smith, we have now been on this journey for some time. And the key question we are trying to resolve is simply, how can the optimized parcel help us find a solution for sustainable and efficient distribution of goods? Being half year into the research project, we have been struck by the complexity, but also by the potential. And our eyes has already been opened up to important achievements that we've been able to realize together with our customers. And one of our customers, uh, the Nordic Telecom uh, operator Telia has set out the strategic target of zero emissions and zero waste by 2030. And one area of waste that was identified was the routers for TVs. Very often these can be easily repaired and re reused. Uh, but instead the user rather orders a new one. So this means transportation of a new router and it means more waste. So Telia was asking themselves the question, how can we engage the customer in our sustainability work by providing them with a simple user-friendly but also sustainable return solution for the broken router? One that makes them feel good by simply doing good. So the packaging was optimized to fit different sizes of routers, but also optimized to create a positive unboxing experience. So the box can simply be used two times, by sending out the new router, but also by returning the broken one. And the result has been an average reduction of air of approximately 19% uh, by simply using three different sizes and with the smallest parcel reaching more than 50% reduction in air. On top of that, uh, the optimized packaging has also allowed them to reduce uh, packaging costs by another 15%. So less air, less carbon emissions, and of course, less waste. So I talked about how we have engaged our suppliers. I've talked about how, to, how we have engaged our, our customers. The next one that we turned to was the consumers. So how can we engage the consumers being part of this very important journey? And for credibility reasons, uh, we directed our interest uh, to the third party verified eco label called the Nordic Swan. And by joining forces with them and the whole e-commerce ecosystem in a series of multi-stakeholder workshops, uh, we wanted, wanted to find a common industry approach to a consumer label for more sustainable transport services. 
So we were very delighted when the Nordic Swan recently announced that they will be going forward with developing criteria and have this in place by 2022. We are, of course, very proud to be part of this journey and, of course, be committed to continue to helping the Nordic Swan uh, to put this in place. And we believe that this will be the way of involving also the consumer in this important quest and for the whole transformation uh, of the entire industry. And by that, make sure that we actually make this happen for real. So these are just some examples for how we will mobilize all the actors in the industry to reach our target of being fossil free by 2030. And by that, make sure that we lead the entire industry into the carbonized economy of the future. Thank you.